So I, I find uh, our data is flowing through the agencies. We're in Media Ocean, and that's something that Comscore has worked on over time. So I do think, though, it's a challenge. Uh, we're all operating our businesses with fewer people. And so no matter the data flow, you still have to have people uh, work on that. And I think that's really kind of the challenge. Now, I know that our data is flowing through these systems. I know that systems have upgraded. I know that some systems are still in the in, in process of upgrading. So that's a little bit of a challenge. Um, and I do think that the measurement companies need to help solve some of these problems by making the data interoperable, and that's what we have been focused on. Uh, and I think that we're in a good position in that because we do have our data flowing through the major uh, systems that uh, transact, especially at the, at the linear and cross-platform level. When we think of, you know, fraud and anything that's traditionally been concerns in the digital space, um, anytime we start to bring um, television, CTV, any type of content um, into a digital format, I believe concerns immediately come up about some of the fraud, some of the um, things that have been more nefarious in the industry. I think it's a very natural, immediate question um, and a concern that people have. On the flip side of this, we have this wonderful just amount of data. Now, at the same time, it can be a blessing and a curse. Some people can feel overwhelmed by it, but I think we've made a lot of strides on that side as well to say we've learned from the past. We know that there have been fraud issues out there, IVT issues. Let's make sure that we're all tackling that immediately. And it's not something where we need to play catch up. Um, everything is not just this race to the bottom with programmatic. It's let's make sure when we have premium content out there that we also have premium ways to make sure we're targeting and protecting the marketers. At Loop May, we, we focus on putting the customers at the heart of everything we do. Um, and uh, Jonathan, that's exactly right. Right now, um, you know, the world went so far down the funnel to ROAS and was so hyper focused on that area. And um, that that is that's kind of the end point of that. You know, you know the sales information, and clients were getting to a point where they figured out all the data points on these people at the tip of the funnel that they started to realize, saw a trend in the last two years where brands really started asking, where's the incrementality coming from? How are we gonna find net new customers? Um, how are we gonna grow our consumer base, sell, eventually sell more products or services? And that's actually what made me join LoopMe is because of all the different product offerings we have and really focusing on that mid and upper funnel and helping brands find incrementality. Been at LoopMe for almost two years now and one of the reasons I wanted to join was because um, they have a vision around bringing brand advertising and simplifying it but also bringing the same type of rigor that you would have um, in performance-based advertising. So what does that mean? It means taking sophisticated AI and technology and scale but instead of focusing on a conversion or a click, to use a survey-based methodology to understand mindsets. Uh, is an ad breaking through? And uh, is uh, somebody more likely to purchase or, or consider a brand? But not just leave it there. Take that data and constantly use it to refine the targeting, to refine the campaign. Yeah, so going into this year's upfront and really moving from testing to full transaction on a multi-currency world, what we have done is we've spent the last year plus working to help our clients understand the methodology, understand the data workflow, and then understand and support from a sales perspective, from a full ad sales perspective. And what we're seeing is clients are shifting more now than ever before from standard national linear to cross-platform to advanced audiences and mixing and matching across all platforms. I think clean room functionality is here to say. So there's some really good things about clean rooms, the permissions, the governance, the enabling folks to you know, share data, but in a safe way where people have control over it. So that functionality is here long term. I think a lot of the clean rooms, a lot of the excitement as of any new tech is probably short term. And so the question is how do brands and how do publishers look at clean rooms and evaluate what's here for the long? Uh, and the key to that, I think, is a connective ecosystem, making sure that your clean room is interoperable 
at the end of the day, there's not going to be one clean room to rule them all. There's probably going to be several dozen of them. So how do you make sure they all work together and work across the clouds as well? I think clean rooms actually started in, uh, you know, in Europe, primarily because in 2018, when GDPR came in, advertisers were looking to find a way to securely connect their data with their partners, and there was no real technology available. So in 2018, 2020, you had several companies in Europe who started focusing on privacy-enhancing technologies to allow advertisers to, you know, make sense of their data and create, you know, partner networks. Uh, so even though it started in international markets, uh, the adoption has been slower just because, uh, you know, the, the clients have to understand uh, privacy. They have to understand, uh, you know, the challenges uh, because the clean rooms don't really, you know, all come with the same kind of capabilities. So it's a new market. So adoption has been slow. Uh, but, you know, they started here. They're here to stay and, uh, you know, uh, have a bright future in the, you know, uh, in the next five years.